At this point, the reader may be thinking, we're finally going to find out what the mu, e3, and ba are at the beginning of every verbal form. I can't blame you. Having to ignore certain grammatical elements when learning a new language can be frustrating. But the time has come. After this, you will know all of the major parts of the Sumerian verbal chain. I will provide you with only the essentials for understanding the majority of Sumerian verbs. There are many nuances and a variety of less common forms that we will cover in the intermediate and advanced books in this series. For now, as always, let's keep things simple. There are basically two types of prefixes that will show up at the very beginning of a Sumerian verbal chain, a conjugation prefix and a modal prefix. Each verb requires a conjugation prefix, and each prefix can give you clues as to the type of verb that will be in the chain. Modal prefixes, however, will affect the verb itself. For example, the modal prefix nu negates the verb. If mu un du three means he built, then nu mu un du three means he did not build. We will discuss the common conjugation and modal prefixes below. There are four common conjugation prefixes, mu, b2, ba, and e3. While it is not essential that you remember the differences between these four prefixes, knowing what kinds of verbs usually appear with them may aid you in translation. Some prefixes normally appear, for example, with transitive verbs, and some with intransitive or passive verbs. Additionally, animate subjects or agents generally appear with certain prefixes while inanimate subjects usually occur with others. If we see the form mu un verb without knowing anything else about the sentence, we would think that the subject, agent, of the verb is animate, person or deity, and that the verb is likely transitive. If we saw the prefix chain ba on verb, we would assume that the subject of the verb is inanimate, and that the verb is likely going to be intransitive or passive. Thus, these prefixes can give you a place to start when you begin to translate the verb in the sentence. It is also important to note that because the prefix E3 is a vowel, it will often disappear in the writing system, being assimilated by surrounding vowels. For example, the form E3 Nyen, he went, can be changed to Nu E3 Nyen, he did not go. However, because the E3 appears after the nu, the E3 will be assimilated into the nu, resulting in the final form nu nyen. As you can see, it is usually not necessary to remember that B2 appears with transitive verbs, because if you see the form B2 in do3, you will know that do3 means to build, and that it is a transitive verb. However, it is good to understand, at this stage, that there are general correlations between the conjugation prefix and the type of verb it will normally appear with. The final type of prefix that you need to learn to translate a Sumerian verbal chain is the modal prefix. As with the conjugation prefixes, there are several that we will not discuss in this chapter. However, these are the most important for the beginner to understand, in my opinion. Let's take each of these individually. The negative modal prefix nu changes the meaning of the verb from positive to negative. As noted above, if mu un du three means he built, then nu mu un du three would mean he did not build. It's really as simple as that. It's very important to note that the form nu does not usually like to appear in that form before the prefixes ba and b2. As odd as it may seem, the form nu will actually change before these prefixes and often appear as li and la. So instead of nu b2 in do3, you will usually see li b2 in do3. Likewise, you usually won't see nu ba nyen, but rather la ba nyen. No matter what the form, nu, li, or la, it will not change the translation. Each will simply negate the verb. When you see the modal prefix ga, begin by translating it let me or let us, if plural. So if you see ga mu nyar, you would translate 
let me set. As with the prefix nu, ga can sometimes change its shape, depending on what follows. The form ga moon yar could also appear gu tu moon yar, where the a vowel is covered by the u of the mu prefix. Similarly, if it appears before b2, it may be written gi for b2. Another important aspect of the cohortative ga is the effect that it has on the rest of the verb. First, the singular will always use the hum to form of the verb. Because the subject of the sentence, I, is indicated by the ga, there is no need to write it again in the verb. Because of that, a b or n will often appear before the verbal base, which indicates the direct object, not the subject of the sentence. For example, if we saw the form mu ub nyar, we would understand it to be a hum to third singular inanimate, marked by the b before the verbal base, and translate it it set or placed. However, if you see the form ga mu ub nyar, the b before the verbal base is not marking the subject of the verb. It's marking the direct object. Think about it like this. The ga tells you that it is a first person subject, so you don't need another marker. Because a ga has been placed at the front of the verb, it is pulling the marker of the direct object from being at the end of the verbal chain to the position before the verb. The final prefix that we will investigate in this chapter is the precative, which, for now, is to be translated let him, her, or it, or may he, she, or it do something. Thus, if mu du thri e means he will build, then chetu mu du thri e would be let him build. As with the other modal prefixes, the form chetu can vary depending on the conjugation prefix that follows. If followed by ba, you will often see cha ba. Likewise, if followed by mu, it will often be written chu mu. Let's go over the vocabulary. Number one. Nindaba, a food offering. Number two, Agadethri, the city of Agade. Number three, Nesang Tu, a first fruit offering. Number four, Anunna, the Anunna gods. Number five, Gi Pisang, a reed basket. Number six, a2 core, the A core temple. Number seven, May Lim Four, frightening splendor. Number eight, Alim, bison. Number nine, Sed Four, to be cold. Number ten, Abzu, the Abzu. Number eleven, Ni Two, meaning one, is fear. Number twelve, Men, a crown or tiara. Number 13, Dinger Dumuzi, Dumuzi. Number 14, A2 Chor Song, the A Chor Song Temple. 15, Lagab, a block. Number 16, Ene, he or she. The signs for this week. Cha, za, gemetu, gu, el, dam, nin, and ku. The exercises for lesson nine. Number one, lugal, a two core she three, nu nyen. Number two, ene, gi, pisong. Chetu en tum three. Number three. Dinger. Lugal she three. Me lim four a ni. Mu un shum tu. Number four. Dinger enki. Lugal. Abzu ke four. Ba an du eleven. And finally, number five. Dinger. Enlil 2, Ra, Shu, 
ga na mu tu. We are so close to the end. Only two lessons to go. Hang in there with me. Until next time, resist poor scholarship. Always ask, how do you know that?